In this DIY video, we're going to tackle building a motorized time-lapse dolly for your camera. This is going to work really great with GoPro cameras. When finished, it's going to have two modes of operation, either continuous, which means that there's just a dial and you set how fast it goes, or intermittent. And this is for much, much longer time lapses where the dolly is only going to turn on at a set interval of time to move a little bit more. So this will allow you to use this time lapse dolly over maybe hour or several hour time lapses to get only a few feet of movement out of the dolly, but still allow you to add that really nice silky smooth, smooth movement to your time lapse shots. So let's dive right into building it. First off, the platform that we're going to be building this thing on today is this four wheel drive robotic base. Now, there's a lot of different options for this, but as anybody who's tried to build robots before out of anything that isn't Lego knows, trying to find motors and wheels that integrate well together is a bit of a pain. So when I found this on Amazon for 17 bucks for this plexiglass framed um, robotic kind of platform, which got some plexiglass plates, the motors just snap right in. It's definitely not the best thing out there, but it was $17. And for that, it's a pretty good deal as it comes with four motors, all the wheels to integrate with them, and all just kind of snaps together. And as a starting place for this project that I don't even really know how well it's gonna work, it seems like a pretty good place to start. That brings us to the electronics which are gonna power this build. We're gonna be using an Arduino. In this case, I've got an Arduino Nano, but if you've got any sort of Arduino, that would work just fine. And then we need a motor controller because the Arduinos do not have anywhere near the output necessary to actually drive the motors directly off their pin. So you need some way of taking the output command from the Arduino and turning that into, well, the thing going forwards. And that can be anything like a motor controller, or you could use a relay if that was uh, a simpler and what you had on hand. In this case, I'm using this uh, single motor driver, but because I don't really want this thing to go anywhere but straight forwards. I'm going to hook all four motors up to this single motor driver. This thing is still really overpowered for the size of project this is, so it'll be just fine. And then I've got a single button. This is going to be able to change between the two different modes I've got. So if I want it to go from going in continuous mode to going in intermittent mode, I just push this button and it's going to change from one mode to the other. And then finally, over here, there's the potentiometer. And this is what's gonna tell the Arduino how fast I want the cart to be going, either in uh, uh, continuous mode or when it's in intermittent mode. So the, con the control on this is gonna change. When it's in continuous mode, dialing this up is going to make the controller go faster. And when it's in intermittent mode, dialing this back is going to make the delay between the motors running a lot, lot longer. This build is gonna be powered using eight AA batteries because that's what I've had on hand. If you had any other sort of rechargeable 12 volt power sources that you had access to, that would probably be better than these archaic rechargeable AA's, but that's what I've got, so that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna take this voltage, I'm gonna feed it directly into the VCC in on this Arduino because it can handle the voltage conversion down to five volts on board. And I'm also going to feed it into the VCC in on the motor driver here so that the direct power from these batteries is going to go straight into the motors when I ask it to turn the motors on. These are the four gear motors that came with the drive platform. And as you can see, the gearboxes are plastic and they're probably super, super cheap and junky, but I think they will do just fine for this project. The first step though, before we can hook these up to anything is we actually have to solder on some leads to the little tabs here in order to actually hook these up to anything. With the wires all hooked up to the motors, it's just a matter of tinning the other end of those motor wires so that they're much easier to hook up to the motor driver. With all the leads soldered onto the motors, it's time to reassemble this little cart. As I've mentioned, the quality of this thing really is not the best. The assembly itself is not very difficult. You take one of these little T pieces, pass it through the slot, grab a motor, Place the motor just in front of the slot there. And then you take one of the included bolts and the second T-piece, pass it through there, pass it through this hole. It is fiddly, but it does also work. So I guess not too bad. With the motors mounted, we just throw the wheels on. 
These wheels are really cool because they're indexed and they're friction fit. So you can see that the shaft isn't round and that matches up with the shaft on the motor. So all we do is just line up the shafts and slide them on. Now, while I did try to solder on the reds and the blacks the same sides, I know I haven't got it right. So the next step for me is going to be just hooking up the leads off my battery and picking one direction and making sure that I tie all these wires together in a way that all the motors drive the cart in that direction. So now we can see that if we hook up this, all the wheels go in the same direction. I'm also not gonna put the top plate back on top of this thing just yet because my hope is that most of my electronics are going to be able to fit underneath there in between the two layers and then the top can just be used to mount my GoPro on. So with that all out of the way, it's time to turn our attention to this little circuit board here. This is what's actually going to do all of the brain work for this cart. Now, we could, of course, just take this breadboard and huck it right on top of the cart, but that's pretty silly and also very easy just to kind of, you know, pull wires out of it. So what we're going to do is transfer this over onto what's called a perf board. This little guy here, basically it's a um, integrated circuit board for people that are lazy and aren't going to drop their own and get them printed. Also really, really good for uh, one ofs, kind of like this project. By making note of the important hookup and important connections before I dismantle this, it just gives me a little bit more help when I start laying things on the perf board because the chances are that the layout is going to be totally different than this. I'm just working out how everything's going to fit together on this perf board and I'm pretty happy with this layout here. The only trick with it is going to be making sure that I've left myself enough room to run the traces between all of the different components but I think because really all I need to get to is the front of this bar, the front bar here and I do have at least one row in there, and then I also have one row of open holes in here, so I should be okay with a layout similar to this one. With these things, it's all about just kind of figuring out how you can place the components and where they fit best, and then also thinking about access. So what I know is that I wanna put this onto the front of my um, dolly here, or maybe the back, I haven't quite decided yet, but the battery pack is gonna be going in the middle here. So I want this on the end, and I want access to both my potentiometer, my button, and the USB port in case I wanna change programming. So I do have uh, a couple of limitations there on where I can put it, because if I, if, yeah. So that's what I'm working with, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm playing around with different layouts to allow me to get all of these ports onto the front. And I do have the option, if I don't use all of it, I can actually cut this perf board here. Uh, Dremel with a cutoff wheel works really, really well uh, to cut this stuff. So I can just zip that edge off and then allow me to bring this a little bit closer to this side. So I made a last minute decision to add these headers. Instead of soldering the Arduino and the motor controller directly to the board, I've added these headers so that I will be able to pull the Arduino out in the future should I need to. But apart from that, I'm pretty much fully completed wiring and now it's just time to solder all to the board. Well, there it is. It's all finished. It's all soldered up. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is finished. And as far as I can tell, it's all working just like it was on the breadboard. Now, you can see that I've got two power cables coming off of the Arduino. That's the ground and uh, VIN power, so that's power in. And those two power lines run into the ground and VIN on the motor shield. And yes, I know I should probably be running a separate power supply for the motor shield as the Arduino, but I'm not, so deal with it. And... Basically what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna take the battery power and run it into here, and then it'll power my motor shield and my Arduino, and I'm gonna put a switch, which is what we're gonna do right now, onto the battery pack so that I can switch the whole entire thing on and off using that single power switch. So I realized that 
there was a paper protective layer on top of this plexiglass, and then when I started trying to peel it off, it turned out that because this cart has been sitting on my shelf as a project to work on for probably two or three years, that the protective plastic is really, really baked on. So I had to um, disassemble the cart once again, and then get out a scraper and a bottle of a spray bottle of water just to try and soften up the protective coating a little bit so I can get off all the plastic. And now that I've started, well, I'm fully committed, so I have to finish it. For all you playing along at home, here's a little trick. You can see I've got all of that protective covering off this piece of plexiglass, but there's still a absolute ton of sticky residue uh, left on it. This is the same kind of stuff that'd be left over from old stickers and stuff like that. It's that really annoying um, goop that you kind of, if you roll it with your finger, it'll kind of roll up, but not really. Anyway, came the ass to get off, especially off of something like plastic, where if we use um, something like uh, acetone, we're going to end up just melting the acrylic. But as you can see, the other one of these, I've cleaned up and it's perfect. So what's the trick? The trick is WD-40. You might think I'm kidding, but you spray this stuff onto the corner of a rag. And then just rub. And no kidding, it takes off all of that really nasty, sticky adhesive. It does leave you a little bit of an oily residue, but a wash in warm soapy water can take care of that. Back to where I was an hour ago, but at least the pussy glass is now clear. I think it was totally worth it because it's gonna make that thumbnail look so much better. Now we can go ahead and finish up our install. So the first step is gonna be placing in our battery bank here. It's gonna slide in between the motors just like that and then our power switch. So we're gonna try crazy, or CA glue on this. Just put a little dab of glue on the bottom of the switch. And then we'll just stick it right where we want it. And then, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but this stuff is amazing. This is CA glue accelerator. So you just take this and you spray it where your CA glue was, and it cures instantly. So we've got our perf board all hooked up. Power comes in via the switch, and if we turn the switch on, you can see that the Arduino there boots up, and the motors start to make this annoying noise. So we can turn that off, and now as we increase this potentiometer, it starts to move forward. So that is our continuous mode. You can see there that we can control the speed of the wheels. So we push the button, the white LED comes on and it switches into intermittent mode. And this allows us to control really, really fine tune how slow it goes. So we can turn this knob up and it'll, the delay between its little jumps will increase and we can really basically turn it off so it's only moving a tiny, tiny bit. Now I'm gonna secure this control board onto the front of the controller. I'm just gonna use some hot snot glue for that. A little dollop in the four corners. Flip this over, find a good spot for it, and press it down. Now we're gonna throw this top plate back on top of the cart so we have somewhere to mount our camera. To do that, the kit included these very long standoffs. With all the standoffs installed, we just drop on the top plate and then thread the nuts on to the top. There it is finished. We've got our switch to turn the power on and off. We've got our speed control knob and we've got our button to let us change between continuous and intermittent mode. Um, the operation of it's super simple but because it's reprogrammable and we have access to that USB port we can basically load whatever we want onto this if we have different uh, requirements for it. 
as uh, kind of your requirements for your time lapse that you're trying to shoot change, you can go ahead and edit the code however you need. To mount our GoPro, we're gonna be using a flat buckle mount, our GoPro in a frame, and as it only seems fitting, a ball joint mount, because this will make realigning where the camera's pointing when we're shooting time lapses super, super easy. Line it up in the middle of our cart and mount it down. And we are all ready to go shoot time lapses. Power the cart on, switch it to intermittent mode. And off we go. There is the finished DIY GoPro time-lapse cart. And as you can see from the sample video, it does a pretty great job. It's a really fun, simple project. There's a couple of components which aren't super cheap, like the motor driver, but the rest of it is uh, very accessible. And it's a really great way to get into programming. The code's not that complicated. It's pretty simple to understand. I've tried to comment it as best as I can, but you can find the code and the circuit diagram and uh, a lot of other documentation on it down in the comments below. So if you do want to do one of these projects and you want to build one of these, you should be able to find everything you need in the comments below. But if you can't, shoot me a message uh, or leave a comment down below and I will try to get you whatever it is that you're missing. If you're looking at the code down below and you're starting to feel a little bit confused, don't worry, there's an unlisted video linked below that has uh, kind of just a walkthrough of how that code works. So I just kind of go through it line by line and explain what does what, but that video is unlisted and it is down there in the comments below, right below the link to find the code. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this project, get subscribed, hit that like button. And if you've got any suggestions for future projects or even future ways, places to take a project like this, leave those down below because I am really interested in what to do next. Let me know what you think of more in-depth, complicated DIY projects like this as compared to just the standard GoPro uh, stuff we've been doing. Recently, we've done the cable cam guide and now this one, and it's an area that I'm trying to get more into. It's what I really enjoy doing, um, but they do take a little bit longer to make and to process, so you won't get as many of them, but hopefully they're a little bit more cool. Anyway, guys, until next time, Thank you very much for watching.